Hi. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to create a, a simple REST service using Spring Boot. I'm going to do this in Visual Studio Code. Now, before we get moving, I need to show you some extensions I have installed. I need the Spring Boot tools installed, Spring Initializer, Spring Boot Dashboard, and the Spring Boot Extension Pack. These four Spring tools will make this possible. These are all free extensions. Um, three out of the four of them come from Spring Boot. All right, so we have that out of the way. Um, start new project. I always use Control Shift P. And you're going to look for Spring, and you want to find Spring Initializer. And I like Maven projects, so I'm going to pick Create a Maven project. It's going to ask you for a version. The default is fine. You can try newer versions, but the default is fine. Pick the language you want. I'm going to use Java. Give it yourself a name. Even if you don't owe a URL, it makes sense to use your name here. Give it a, an artifact ID. This is the name of the project. Pick your packaging type. Jar or WAR, they both end up doing the same thing at the end of the day. Pick your Java versions you happen to have. And then you need two dependencies. You need Spring Boot DevTools and you need Spring Web. Both of those can be found by a simple search up there. But it's Spring Boot DevTools and Spring Web. Press Enter to continue. It's going to ask you to place it somewhere. Hardest part about this is creating a folder. And then I'm going to open it. Um, yes, you trust the authors because you are the author. And as is with the typical Maven projects, you have a big hierarchy of items set up. Um, what you'll care about is the fact that you have Spring Boot application already here with its annotations, some of the imports. Um, your POM file should be properly built with the web and the, start, the dev tools. And I want to verify that this runs. I'm going to expand your Spring Boot dashboard. That was one of the extensions we had in. And I'm going to run this thing. It'll take a minute for the terminal to fire up. The first run is always the, the longest. Clearly, you need Java installed for this. I hope that goes without saying. Notice it pops up. You'll see Spring Boot here. That's telling you, telling you it's loading. Um, you also notice down here it's running on a web server. Tomcat started on port 8080. That is changeable in the settings, um, but you only need to change it if you have something else running 8080. To look at this, you're going to go to a browser. Localhost colon 8080. And this is the expected error. We'll fix this. Um, the reason for this is we don't have any responses to get or any of the other HTTP commands. So it just defaults and says, I don't know what's going on. All right, so we have the project started. Let's now make it do it at once. We're going to respond to a simple get. So back in Visual Studio Code, I'm going to create a new method. And we're do this right the first time rather than doing it wrong. So I'm going to use a return type of response entity. This is built into Spring Boot. This allows me to send back data types and HTTP status codes. This one is going to send back a string. And I'm going to create a, a function called get response. I'm going to need to import here. And get response, of course, let's return something. The way that these will all work initially is you're going to have some type of data type response. It usually won't be HTML like I'm doing here. It'll typically be adjacent documents.
All right, so this is your typical response. I don't care about the warning today. So public response, entity spring, get response. You have response, whatever this is. Um, as we move forward and do more complicated ones, these will be a data type, and it'll return the data type, it'll actually return it back as a JSON document. If you have a list that return back, it'll return a, a listed JSON documents. I now need to make this respond to get. So above the method, I need to add an annotation. And this annotation is at request mapping. We have to give it the URL. Right now, this is coming off the root of our website. And give it a method. Technically, get is default, but you can see here, delete, get, put, post, all of our normal HTTP commands are here. So that's there. Take a look at what responds here. Oh, let me restart my server. I forgot something. Yeah, I forgot an annotation. That's why it's not working. Um, without this annotation, I'm going to add in. Spring doesn't know this is a REST controller. I need to add REST controller here above Spring Boot, above main. So let's see if it's happy now. All right, good. It works. Okay, so what to do? We got an H1 back. What we did is we responded to a get response. I'm going to take a look at this in Postman. Postman is the tool that allows you to check all of your HTTP settings. And we're going to get a little more information here. I'm going to go back here and look at 8080 send. I get back at works. We see my status here is okay. If I change this to be a post, and send, I get a 405 method not allowed because I haven't coded it yet. To code that, you repeat something like you did here. So I'll make it post. I'll call it post response. And I'll give us a message. And I'll use a different HTTP status. So I'll do not implemented. So you see, I'm responding to post with the same settings. I have a different response entity, and I give it a different HTTP status return. I come back here to Postman and send that. Let me restart. I get my message not implemented back, and it says 501 not implemented. So I'm using my message and my status code. All right, as we progress in this class, we're going to add more and more of these methods. We're going to do all four of the common methods, get, post, put, delete, and we're going to put custom code inside here that does what we want it to do. So to rehash, you've learned how to create a Spring Boot, a simple Spring Boot web server. Um, respond to get and respond to post in this video and we've learned how to send back HTTP statuses. Alright, thanks. Good luck to you.